Okay, so whenever you are ready, yeah, you can start. Okay, perfect. Um, let me first uh, thank uh, the organizers for giving us the opportunity <coughs> to present our work here today. I'm very happy to do that. Let me go there. Um, you tried the presentation now. Okay, uh, so I was hearing someone. Yeah, it's okay. Just uh, I will try to mute someone if it happens, but uh, just go on. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going to talk about uh, this paper that we put out in the archive um, a couple of weeks ago, um, together with uh, Tim and his students, uh, Jacob, Mutu, and Danny. In the first part of the talk, I want to motivate a little bit what we did, uh, explain um, some details of the particular compactification that we have considered. Um, I will, I will not uh, <clears throat> say um, nothing uh, new really here in this first part. I just want to give you uh, some of the details, how we arrive at our uh, N equals 1, D equals for effective action. And in the second part of the talk, um, Tim will go into the real meat of our project and give you some of the new results and of the new, new vacua that we found. Um, have, we'll have some discussion of the results um, in the context of uh, Solomon program, Solomon conjectures, and we'll finish with some conclusions. In 2005, um, DGKT argued that it was possible to stabilize uh, all moduli in uh, type 2 flux compactification, so Calabi-Yau uh, uh, manifolds with H2 mobile equals to zero, right? rigid calabi -Yau's. And this partly uh, motivated Becker, Becker, Rafa, and Walter in 2007 to study the mirror uh, dual of, uh, of these setups, that is flux compactifications of type 2b on spaces with h1,1 equals to zero. We want to study landau Ginsburg models, which are mirrors to uh, rigid Calabria manifolds. Uh, after turning h3 flux, uh, they will no longer be dual to just DGKT, but actually more general and uh, our motivation is to start or continue exploring this rather uncharted uh, region of the landscape and try to test some conjectures or learn new things about how they work you can write the works in action for landau Gisborg theories in this way but since uh, at the end we want conformally invariant theory we should allow the theory to evolve by the normalization group equations flowing to an infrared fixed point. And then it turns out that the only relevant quantity is actually this uh, superpotential, which um, should be chosen as a quasi homogeneous analytic function of the Carroll superfields. And it was shown in the early 90s that it is uh, uh, that possible to use Landau Gisborg orifolds as a consistent. Uh, a stream background. In um, familiar uh, Calabria compactifications, the modular space splits into uh, the complex factor and the scalar uh, sector. And the dimension of each scalar manifold is given by host numbers. Um, if we uh, try to reobtain these results from the conformal field theory language, then we know that the algebra includes uh, the energy momentum tensor, AU1. Uh, current J and, and fermionic generators, and it is possible to classify the Hilbert space and the fields of the theory in representations of the algebra. Uh, to do that, one introduces the set of primary and anti uh, chiral and anti chiral uh, superfields um, as those annihilated uh, by the positive modes in the long expansion of these uh, generators. And it's possible to show that this uh, set of chiral chiral. Uh, primary super fields, CC and or CA for anti-chiral have the structure of rings. And it can be seen that the number of states in these rings with uh, in CC ring with charges uh, one and one is the same as the dimension of the cohomology H2,1. And similarly for uh, minus one and one for CA or uh, one and two for CC and the dimension of the H1,1 cohomology. So this is all well-known results. Regarding landau gisborg theories, one can build the ring of 
uh, the set of polynomia in this uh, Carl Finns modulo, the set of polynomia which are the partial derivatives of the superpotential, and this is isomorphic to the CC ring. We can consider the, this uh, superpotential, and this is the particular uh, example that we want to consider, which is built out of nine uh, Carl superfields and just taken to the cube and sum them over them, and all followed by this symmetry that I have right here. Then one can compute the partial derivatives of the superpotential and um, find out that this uh, R uh, has um, several uh, components. And the ones which are invariant under this orbifold symmetry is this set of 84 yeah. monomials, which is built as the product of three different of these Carroll superfields. So each 2, 1 would be uh, 84. Now, in the uh, untwisted sector, of the land values were orifolds, the AC ring is trivial. And in our example, even after including the twisted sectors, H1, 1 is zero. So one notices that H1, 1 equals to zero and H2, 1 equal to 84 of land values were orbifold uh, are mirror to the Hodge numbers of, of this uh, toroidal orbifold. And it can be seen uh, that this, the, the land values were orbifold, and the mirror of this uh, read Calabiao. Uh, are actually in the same modular space. Now, uh, for today, uh, we want to restrict modular stabilization to the mirror of this uh, untwisted model. So we only have a few, uh, three uh, complex scalar fields. Um, that's what we want to focus. Um, for type 2A with fractions and OC planes, as I mentioned before, in Rigid Calabiao. Uh, all modeling can be established at three levels, so we expect a similar result to hold in our um, type to be setup. Um, now, uh, par par our work is uh, based on these results from this uh, Baker Baker Baffa Walter paper from 2007, where you can find uh, a compl more complete discussion on fully established solutions in the in the Landau-Gisbur non-geometric language, um, in particular, uh, fully stabilized Minkowski solutions with all scalar fields. So um, we want to focus only on part of the problem. Uh, also, pe periods for the generalized Calabria, which is mirror to the rigid manifold, have explicitly been computed. But um, for our purposes today, we will assume that uh, the other moduli are stabilized, have been stabilized, or can be stabilized. We turn on three form fluxes, H3 and H3, and we cancel the tuple by introducing all three planes. The RR um, F3 fluxes in the in the type 2A site will correspond to also to RR fluxes. But under mirror symmetry, we expect that the H3 NS uh, flux can become also NS flux and also geometric and non-geometric fluxes. So we actually will be probing a larger part of the landscape that DGKT. Um, another difference here is that uh, there is a- Wait, When you say larger, do you mean somewhat different? Because I would imagine DGKT has also H, which is not dualized to a geometric one here either. So there's a yes. kind of, they have overlap, but they have some this-, this. You're right. right. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say different. I should have said different. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, and, and another difference is that uh, here we will have a powerful non randomization theorem, uh, which provides uh, control. And this will be important because, as Tim will explain, uh, you can essentially prove that the Minkowski solutions that we find uh, are, cannot be found at weak coupling. Okay. Yeah, let me just make a quick comment here. Um, so in DJKT, there are no, no 2 comma 1 cycles. So there are only the 3 comma 0 cycle and the 0 comma 3, which is the dual of the holomorphic 3 form. I think only one of those cycles can be threaded with H. And if we are in a toroidal orbifold, we can in principle always t-dualize on the other three. Um, so I think we are more general than DJKT because, I mean, at least in the toroidal setup, I can kind of t-dualize always a three cycle or use mirror symmetry, whatever, how you want to call it, along a T3 that is dual to the H flux, I think. 
so I think in that case, this might actually be larger. Um, it might be in a more generic Calabiao case, if I use the SYZ construction that maybe but what Kumran saying is absolutely right, but I think in the simple toroidal orbifolds, so I would H H H and S of BGKD become what in this case? In this H door? only H one particular. So we have four components of H. We will see in a second. Mm -hmm. There are four different components, and one of them is the H flux in DJKT, and the other ones would be geometric and non-geometric fluxes. I think, at least in the restriction to this toroidal orbifolds, okay. I think we can. Yeah. So you mean that you are more generic because you include H flux that would map to geometric or non-geometric fluxes in type 2A, right? Yes. So in principle, we are studying something like type 2A with a very specific H geometric and non-geometric mm -hmm. setup, but in type 2B, it's just H flux. Yeah. And it's even more general also that the um, because in this other no, in your, the, the other paper with Thomas Van Riet and others, you also consider geometric fluxes. So it's even right. more generic than that. So it, it yes. also have a non-geometric component. Right, right. Yes, so with geometric fluxes, you, for example, could not get Minkowski vacuum. One of the exciting things here we will get to, or it will get to, is that there are actually Minkowski vacuum, which would require non-geometric fluxes on the dual side, yeah, on the type 2 side, yeah. So one motivation we had, which I, I haven't heard it said here, which I will mention, is that type 2A, you have worksheet corrections to quantities of the of super potential, but in the type 2B side, you have no corrections. So the classical formulas yeah. that we see in the three level is, is useful. And that's why this, we started with this is what I meant. Oh, you said that. I missed that. Yeah, that was the last sentence that I, that I had. <laughs> yeah, but I think it also comes up on the next slide, right? Or no? Well, yeah. there are two yeah. different, sorry, there are two different, just to be clear, there are two different non realization terms. One is, Alpha prime versus non alpha prime correction, and the other is non perturbative string corrections or not. So, the powerful non theory theorem that I, you were mentioning that we mentioned in our paper was referred to the non perturbative string corrections. Here, I'm talking about the more boring correction, which is alpha prime corrections. And there are no alpha prime corrections in the type 2B side, whereas there are alpha prime corrections in type 2A side. Yes. Yeah, we, we, I will go. I will. I will. I was planning to mention that in a minute, but oh, maybe I should have already said it here. Yeah, but yes, yeah, you're 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 right. So thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me continue. So um, the particular model that we consider uh, in most of our paper is this uh, this particular dynamics work model with this orbifold. Um, in Becker et al, they consider different uh, consistent or orientifold projections, and we will choose this particular one where um, the wall seed parity is combined with this operation where the first and the second um, superfields are exchanged. And this allows an influx contribution of 12 in order to cancel the tampon. The tampon. And uh, if needed, we can also introduce the, the, the range. And um, for, for simplicity in our model, uh, of our three complex structure model that I was talking about before, we actually set them equal. So at the end of the day, we will just have for the n equals one SU model with two uh, complex scalar fields. So we'll just have to minimize for real scalar fields. Now, uh, coming to what uh, Kumru was anticipating, I want to talk about the superpotential, which um, is, uh, uh, is given by uh, Google Papa Witten. But for our, our um, non geometric, uh, right? Uh, H1,1 equals to zero uh, set up in type 2B, these four glides are going to be exact. Uh, so there's not only that there are no genius corrections, also no alpha prime corrections. So, um, yeah, they, and we could also discuss um, no perturbative corrections. And uh, this is what they, they, uh, they do uh, say a, a few things about them. Um, since uh, H1,1 is zero, uh, you don't expect to find uh, BPS Euclidean deep brain instantons, which can contribute to the superpotential. And they also, uh, authors also argue that D minus one instantons will not contribute due to the underlying higher supersymmetry. Although I have to say that this point was not, it's not, uh, still not totally clear to me. Uh, I could th try to think of configuration where you can perhaps place the D minus one instanton on top of uh, the three plane and perhaps that can still be supersymmetric and perhaps contribute to the super potential. So this is the only 
point that was not totally clear to me. Uh, but um, oh, so uh, maybe I should think about more in the future. But for the purpose of the, of this talk, um, I will uh, we will consider that they do not contribute and that the superpotential is exact. And then we want to explore the results or Minkowski solutions, and and then we can maybe discuss more. So, sorry, can, can, I, can I ask a little bit about this setup? I'm just a little confused. Yes. Yes, so of you, course. You, you, I, I, you're treating the Lander Ginsburg theory as if it were a sigma model and taking the geometric quantities like omega to correspond to conformal field theory quantities? Yes. Is that the, is that so, the idea? Yes, that is the idea. Um, I, I have, I'm not explaining all of that, um, but they, in, this, in this paper that I'm, I'm citing here, they have a full correspondence where they argue that all of these geometric quantities have a, a non-geometric analog and that the same, you can still use the same formulas. Um, but for example, when, in, a, in a moment, I will argue about the Kähler potential and we will have to say, do something else, take uh, a large complex factor limit in order to argue for that. It, see, it seems very confusing because this, this formula is true in the supergravity limit, a, a large volume. But as soon as you turn on H flux, you expect your CFT to change. Forget the Ramal flux. Just, to, just the H flux itself changes your conformal field theory. So why, why would it make sense to, and what's, what's the approximation that allows it to make sense to talk about this around this given Lando Ginsburg theory? See, in the, in, the, in the geometric limit, you would say at large volume, I can treat H as in some moral sense of perturbation on the gravity theory because there's an underlying CFT, there's a large volume limit that <clears throat> gives me some control. But here there is no control. You have well, a, you're so starting the, with a CFT. The argument for that, the argument for W was based on tension supersymmetry algebra, PTS supersymmetry algebra. So the W formula is more general than, than the background that you're talking about. So in that paper with uh, uh, Becker and Walter, we basically described what you what what the ingredients are to justify this being exact. Basically, it's a central charge of the supersymmetry algebra is to put in terms of. It's not a super gravity argument at all. Even well, even, a, in, a, even, yeah. in, even okay. in the even in the geometric case, I would not say it's a super gravity argument. I would say the argument is not because you have a large super gravity background. That's not the reason that w, the GDW is correct. It's a supersymmetry argument. So it's the supersymmetry argument gives you a BPS quantity in terms of something like the central charge off some that, large volume. That's all. That's, no, but the, no, the, no, no. The, the fact that the central charge is not corrected. Is, is the main thing that we are using. That's but the that, statement that's, that's true. So it, let, let me think of a simpler case. If I just took S3 with an H flux, so I start with uh, uh, SU2 WZW, and I want to perturb the H flux by some integer amounts, I wouldn't think about this as turning on a super potential in any sense, because I've actually changed the CFT. The, the, statement, about the, the statement about the NS5 brains, what's the central charge of the NS5 brain, the algebra? The supersymmetry algebra determines, regardless, even if you break supersymmetry, even if you break supersymmetry, there's a central charge in your algebra that you're talking about. Whether that configuration preserves or not is a secondary statement. I'm only talking about the central charge of the supersymmetry algebra in that sector. There's no ambiguity there. Anyhow, I think we will be, be derailing this talk, but we, we are not can talk. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um. So uh, now I want to um, argue, so for, for Minkowski Bakla, all we need is the is the superpotential. Um, but if we, but in this talk, uh, we also want to to discuss supersymmetric ABS Bakla. So we need to argue for a formula for the Kähler potential. So in order to do that, uh, our, the idea is to uh, uh, deform the landau model, take the large complex structure limit in which the model is uh, precisely mirror to the rigid or default, and then borrow the formulas for the um, type 2a Kähler potential large border limit, which uh, call for supergravity dimensional reduction, and then just use mirror symmetry to uh, find the formula for the type 2b Kähler potential in this large complex structure limit, uh, only in this limit. Um, well, this is. Um, Pretty pretty standard. Uh, the type two a Kähler potential for the for the hypermultiplex sector is just four times the for the dilaton. Now in general, the um, 
the, uh, the holomorphic three form, the complexified holomorphic three form will have the not only S, but also this U moduli, H2, one of them. In our case, in the type 2A, uh, H2, one is zero. So all we have is the S. So where normally this term would be split into uh, different different terms. Uh, in our case, it gives only one. It just gives you the k potential for the S. So there's this uh, special factor of four. So the, once you do uh, mirror symmetry to type 2B, the first part is just the standard factor of three because we are setting all complex factor moduli equal. But for the dilaton, we have this uh, surprising, uh, could be surprising factor of four, which uh, is important. And we will see the consequences of that uh, in a minute. So uh, a summary for this part, um, uh, and then I will let him, I have only one, more, one or two more slides, I think. The conditions for uh, supersymmetric minkowski vacua do not depend on the KL potential. So uh, when we study them, we will assume that the, the full uh, normalization theorem that I was talking about before for both alpha prime, uh, GS, and non perturbative corrections holds, and that the super, uh, the super potential is exact. And this is important because minkowski vacua uh, can essentially be proven to not be, be found at weak coupling. Now, when study supersymmetric ABS vacua, uh, we will always be at weak coupling and large complex structures, so we can use this formula for the KL potential. Now, we could also discuss non supersymmetric vacua, but then they could definitely receive perturbative and non perturbative corrections, so uh, we don't have control. Now, a few words about uh, tapper cancellation and the factor of four in the KL potential. Um, so, Beckett et al. Um, identify the type of contribution to the fluxes in the large complex structure limit, where uh, we know uh, what the formulas are, and the lambda is exactly equal to the rigid Torreda or default, and then they translate it into lambda useful language and study the different orientables, but that's not something I'm explaining today. Um, the uh, interesting fact that I want to focus now is that uh, influx can be negative in our model. So in well-known geometric type to be orientifolds like uh, GKP, influx is always positive in supersymmetric solutions. And this follows because when you uh, impose that the covariant derivative of the superpotential is zero, then fluxes uh, can be shown to be ISD, imaginary self-dual. And in turn, this implies that the influx is positive. However, in our setup, the factor of four in the KL potential changes the covariant derivative with respect to S of the superpotential in such a way that one can no longer derive this ISD requirement, except if the, we are in, in Minkowski solutions, where the additional condition that the superpotential is zero again implies that fluxes are ISD. So this means that we will be able to put an arbitrary large number of D3 brains in ABS, but not in Minkowski. Um, and this will be uh, important. Um, for the next part of the talk, which I should uh, let him do and uh, stop uh, sharing. By the way, this point that you just made now was not made in my paper with them. It was made by the, their own paper, follow up yes. paper there, just for the reference. Yes, yes, yes. That, is, that is correct. Yes. It was made in the next paper by Baker, Baker, and Watcher one year later, I think. Okay, perfect. Um, are there any questions or comments? Um, yeah. So, yeah, good. So, um, yeah, there is this particular factor of four, um, which is important, but which we believe is correct, but it's only important for ADS vacuum because for Minkowski, it doesn't really matter, but it follows from mirror symmetry and, and it should be there. Um, Okay, so what I want to do is I want to present solutions and I go from Minkowski to ADS to the sitter and Minkowski is maybe already the most interesting one, but um, 
nevertheless, let me start with this. So as Edo was saying, Minkowski vacuum are flat space scale separated solutions, and we have those three conditions, and they actually imply that the fluxes are imaginary self-dual. They contribute like uh, D-brains, so we can only turn on a finite amount. And in our, or Kumrun's particular model, one to the nine, these three orbifold, um, they're essentially 2403 planes leading to a tadpole 12. And we can cancel this tadpole entirely by turning on these fluxes. What is, however, very interesting here, uh, which is kind of new in this solution, um, is you can, so I think two terms here vanish, those two, and you can have these other two terms kind of canceling. One essentially fulfills the tadpole with a minus three times a minus four gives you a 12 in this term. And the other contribution here kind of completely cancels. So we are actually left with the flux number that does not appear in the tadpole because the other fluxes are chosen uh, appropriately. That gives us an infinite family of Minkowski vacuum solutions. Um, so in particular, we have a free parameter H naught that we can choose arbitrarily um, and that modifies our solution. MU is a complex structure modulus. It's fixed to square root three over two. MS is the dilaton. So one can ask, uh, how does the dilaton scale? And it unfortunately scales in a rather boring way here. So if H naught becomes very small and large or very positive and large, the dilaton goes to strong coupling. However, as Edo was saying, these uh, uh, solutions are protected by, by no growth theorems, uh, non renormalization theorems that essentially prevent any G string corrections to W. So these solutions are, exist, uh, are correct and they exist in strong coupling. So this is one of the most exciting things. I think with this form blend or in general, with studying string theory, we are often constrained to, to parametrically weak coupling or parametrically strong coupling using some dualities like S duality in the regime where the coupling is really order one, usually you don't really know what to do and you expect something very exciting. And the exciting thing that Kumrun and company found in 2006 is there are Minkowski vacuas in 4D n equals one, which I didn't know about. And I think many other people thought they don't believe uh, they exist at all. Um, however, they seem to exist. And in our case, as Ida was saying, we restricted kind of to two moduli, but in principle, there are 84. Kumrun in his original paper, they, they actually solved for all 84 moduli and stabilized all 84 moduli. Um, we wanted to study the solution slightly more generically and look for these infinite families and see whether we can generalize them. So we restricted to a simpler model. Um, so this is one of the most exciting things, I think, uh, that you have in 4D n equals one, apparently um, Minkowski vacuum. Um, let me mention here what I just said before, the, the maximum value you can get for the string coupling, sorry, for the inverse string coupling is two times square root three, so 3.5. So you can't really go to weak coupling. These solutions do not seem to appear at weak coupling at all. One can show that one cannot get parametrically weak coupling. We haven't managed to find a sharp bound. It might also be moduli dependent. But while Kumro's solution was slightly smaller than one, we got to factor three, three and a half, but certainly not really weak coupling. So it so seems these solutions, yeah. Tim, one question. So having an infinite family of Minkowski vacua would go against the expectation of having a finite string landscape below a certain cutoff, right? And also these so, ideas of Thomas Grimm of tameness and so on. Do you think yes. that there is really an infinite family or maybe, I don't know, when you try to get the infinite family, you are getting more and more to strong coupling and then somehow you should get right. the ratios or? Yes, so I'm not 100% sure what is happening, but usually once you vary these families, something else happening, right? Maybe the internal space, you get some light modes or I, I guess, I don't know, one way, if you go to infinitely strong coupling, it would be dual to infinitely weak coupling, right? Via S duality, maybe there is some power becoming very light or something. Um, so I, I don't necessarily see a contradiction here if some modes but become- But power getting light doesn't help here because it's Minkowski. So the vacuum is always below, like, it's not like- Yes, the vacuum would always be zero, that is true. Yeah. 
I did, am... did, did they claim to? I mean, in my paper with them, we didn't have an infinite family. In no. the follow-up paper, did they claim to have an no. infinite family of Minkowski vacuo? No, this is what we found. So we found, so there's an infinite, sorry, there is a follow-up paper by Becker Becker, and then there's a paper in 2104 by some, I think, Japanese people. Um, this family we found in the simplified model that was studied in the follow-up by Becker Becker and in this Japanese paper. But the Japanese paper just plugged in fixed values and we plugged in also fixed values, but we noticed there's this degree of freedom. But it's indeed true that I don't know how to remedy this um, where one runs to parametrically strong coupling. Um, but you said that the superpotential does not receive GS right. corrections, but right. maybe the Keller potential does. Yeah. And then is it that, not valid anymore? Or? No, I come to that in a second. So the, the masses here essentially are positive. So these are fully stabilized n equals 1 for the Minkowski vacuum. That's what the other people also uh, checked. Um, so in the maximum masses we get in whatever Planck units are as these two positive values. However, was Irena was saying we are not at weak coupling and thus the Kähler potential received corrections. And at that stage, nobody pushed it further. The Kähler potential does indeed enter into the mass formula. Um, so in principle, these corrections could lead to flat directions. They cannot lead to unstable directions because we have a supersymmetric solution, but they could make one of these masses zero. Um, so the question is, can we trust these vacuums or will these corrections actually kind of lead to masses zero? And here we kind of found an argument that is not too complicated that essentially tells us the masses remain positive. Um, so the, the argument is not too complicated. In a Minkowski vacuum. Oh, uh, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. So um, is this of a potential uh, exactly polynomial? Why are there no like duals to alpha what would be alpha prime corrections in two A and well sheet instanton corrections in two A? Yeah, so saying the holomorphic three form is exactly cubic, but I don't think that's true. The holomorphic three form is exactly cubic. No, I think it. So this is an infinite, an infinitely large complex structure that may be true, but surely there are- No, I thought, this, I thought the Landau-Ginsburg model takes these alpha prime corrections into account. And then they had some argument essentially in this original paper based on the non- So they derived this using the equivalent of- Sorry, the, the, the mirror to alpha prime corrections. They're talking about alpha prime corrections in 2A. And was it in well, some alpha prime corrections are not, the, the whole point of mirror symmetry is that you map into something, there's no alpha prime correction. Yeah, so but they map, no yeah, they map into corrections to the holomorphic reform, making it not exactly polynomial. I mean, I not think, exactly a cubic. Ah, no. okay, yeah. No, I think, but well, this is a torus, right? I think, so this is a toroidal orbifold. No, but there's, so it's like in two way, there would be the, the twisted modes, the blow up moduli. And uh, so, well, sure the periods are not trivial. That's, is, are you assuming that? No, you're not assuming that. Periods are complicated, right? Yeah, very complicated. Form. Exactly. So, so, that so, the so it depends on depends on what subset of modular you're looking at. If you look at diagonal ones, right, then you'll be the same as the torus. It's boring. And then there are the, the AD4 moduli. In general, they're not boring. They're complicated. So I'm not exactly. Sure. Yeah, that's the that's what I'm talking about. In fact, you need you need to have some. It's like what the paper in Kuman and Timo and I wrote. You would expect to have some enhanced supersymmetry if you want something with no instant on, what would be the mirror to instant on correction? So if you want a, right. a a period that's exactly, exactly cubic or something like that, right. you would need some kind of uh, enhanced supersymmetry or something. Right, like yeah, that. yeah, so I was gonna come to that. I thought we do the half set here because it's morally a torus um, we are working with, a toroidal I mean, orbifold. It's, it's twisted, there's blow up modes. It's not just a torus, it's an orbifold. So there's yes, so we look here at the, at the diagonal toroidal Torus yeah, but that's not the full. That's not the full super potential. Not no, we set modules. the other ones to zero, so one would have to see. Yes, but including the other ones. So in Kumrun's yeah, paper, you cannot just set them to zero. You have to. You have to show that it's a minimum at zero. I mean, if yes. I set them to zero, then of course you can find all kinds. If you set just moduli to zero, then you look for minima. You can find all kinds of minima, but you, you have to fix all of them. 
Right, but since it's a point of enhanced symmetry, normally that's an extremum, right? I think you can set them to zero. That is the oh, usual perfect. argument yeah. for studying. Yeah, this I do not know, but uh, yeah. it would be good yeah. to try and understand that because there's also instant on corrections associated to them. So but perhaps a resolution to our problems is that uh, when you take into account all of these things that Palti is mentioning, so you establish all of the modula, you find a, a, a true solution, then they find, you find that it's not an infinite solution anymore. So things change somehow so that there's well, only... I, yeah, I mean, I also studied, I had a paper on Mikoski vacuum and on, I had two papers on Mikoski vacuum and the first one, not geometric ones, and the first one was like your paper, which was just polynomial, and then you can find Mikoski vacuum, but then we quickly realized that uh, you don't expect exactly polynomial superpotentials, you expect corrections to them, right. and then you have to find uh, fixed points of uh, periods. Right. And that's much, much more complicated. Yeah. To, to but this is what they did in the original paper from Kumrun in the in this then, one. But then, but that, yeah. That, so you could find fixed points of periods, but typically that's very difficult to do uh, in the sense that you, right. you have left over flat directions. And, you know, people studied this back in 2006, like Katru et al. And uh, it's, a, it's a hard problem to find the fixed points of the periods. Um, right. I thought they did that in this paper where they okay, managed yeah, to know. find fixed point at a particular chosen value for the complex structure they essentially solved for the fluxes and found I, fluxes. I think if I remember correctly, we did it at the origin of the Lando Ginsburg point, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I but agree. it wouldn't be large complex structure. The, the no, no, it, was, exactly no, it wasn't. That point. It wasn't. It, wasn't it large cannot structure. be. It cannot be. No, I know that. It is I not. It is not. Problem. Yes. Yes. But that's not the vacuum you're looking at. There could exist such vacuum, but not the ones that you're looking at. Uh, yes. Yes. So, and but, in the paper of Kumrun, they didn't find an infinite family of aqua, right? No, no they we were not, one we vacuum were not and one large. Yes, we were not looking at the large complex structure. The claim that the large complex structure you get infinite family was in the follow-up paper they wrote. Yeah, yeah. So the I think yeah. the large complex structure vacua you can argue might be ADS vacua because you can argue corrections are suppressed so they don't destabilize them. But I don't think yeah, it's exactly Minkowski. Uh, I, I get to those. However, I think at strong coupling, there might be Minkowski here. Um, uh, yeah. So the one thing I wanted to add here is that essentially these Minkowski vacuum, the masses receive corrections. So even if the masses are positive, how do you know that you don't get flat directions? Um, and there, I mean, essentially, essentially an argument due to, from Edu, but the mass matrix in a Minkowski vacuum is essentially the second derivative of the superpotential squared contracted with the Kähler metric. And if you write it as a matrix, it's just this W times KW bar, and then you just take the determinant. And if you take the determinant, um, you can write it as a product and you find the absolute value of this determinant of W times the determinant of the uncorrected Kähler potential. And the Kähler potential gets a lot of corrections, but before we include these corrections, um, everything was positive. So that was in our paper, in, in Kumun's paper, and all the papers, they found some Minkowski vacua. So one can conclude that this determinant of W that doesn't receive corrections is positive. And now K essentially re receives a lot of corrections. Um, and then we put everywhere a C for corrections, but you can essentially play the same game and you find that the determinant of W enters again times the corrected Kähler potential, which we have no clue what it is. The corrected Kähler potential, however, needs to have a positive determinant, I think, because otherwise the kinetic terms would be ill-defined after including the kinetic terms. So if the determinant of the fully corrected Kähler potential is still positive, just so that the kinetic term makes sense, then since that W didn't receive corrections, um, the product should be also positive. It can't be negative, it can't be zero, then it would be all defined kinetic terms. So that would mean that uh, although the masses get corrected and can change dramatically, they cannot go to zero exactly. So Tim, um, I think this is reasonable what you say, but I just want to make sure, how do we yes. know that K does not become degenerate as on at some point, in other words, it becomes, if you have no degrees of freedom, then you could say, oh, K is bad, but that's not, mean, does not mean right. that you just want to be bad. Right, just I mean, 
Right. I just don't know if the complex structure it fixed at one or square root three or something, or, or the dilaton is fixed at one or square root three. Why would there suddenly be a, some kind of, it's not like a singularity to me, or it doesn't look at least to me naively. That's my thought. Um, I mean, like the, like the conifold transitions, the analog of that, would they be related to the K becoming degenerate? There may be, yes. But here, I mean, for example, here we just have the string coupling is one point or that's I mean in our example I don't know what it was in yours but in our example it was the string coupling is 3.5 yeah. right so if I come from weak coupling go to string coupling 3.5 of course I get corrections or even if I go to string coupling 2 or whatever but I don't see why suddenly new degrees of freedom would emerge well I, I mean I'm not saying it will in fact in our paper I don't think we even worried about that we assume it's not yeah. it's okay but but I think I'm just saying, is it possible that there's some exotic situation this happens? I'm, I'm not sure if there's a, that can never happen in just by supersymmetry. I just don't know. That's true. I don't know. No, I agree. I mean, if I would go to some limit where something, yeah. I, yeah, I know. I totally agree. I thought about that too. I just thought this is some random point that is not in any way special. So I wouldn't see why suddenly there are new degrees of freedom emerge. Well, certainly everything. sounds exotic, I agree. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I agree there is this loophole that, that Kumrun pointed out correctly that if that point is very special and there are new degrees of freedom or something happening, then this breaks down, yeah. Okay. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Uh, yes. So, so this uh, back here with lots of alpha prime correction. So even yeah. though at the two oh, sorry, derivative, given at the two derivative level, do we have an argument that the kinetic terms have to be positive? Because you are summing over infinitely many higher derivative terms as well. Sorry, here. I don't know. You're saying once I go to stronger. So here, essentially, I, I, I worried about string loop corrections. And you're saying once I go to larger and larger string loop, the sign of the. I mean, alpha prime, prime corrections, not string loop corrections. So, so these are, you know, there are infinitely many alpha prime corrections because you're not at small, uh, you're not at large volume. So the leading kinetic term may have the wrong sign, but then there are higher ter corrections term that could mm. change the story. It's like, it's like ghosts, uh, people look at ghost inflation then the leading kinetic term is wrong but then the higher term, kinetic right term. i mean but here i thought what i start with has a correct has a correct sign right and then i kind of include more and more corrections so it would be that the corrections at some point flip it the other way but that sounds again exotic to me i don't know I'm not sure yeah okay thank you yeah thank you good question i i haven't thought about it yeah. um yeah, so um, yeah, here's just what we kind of discussed already that once you have more supersymmetry, you expect Minkowski vacuum to exist, but they always usually have flat directions. So I'm not aware of any other Minkowski vacuum without flat directions. So, um, and for n equals one, there's essentially no protection. Um, so one would naively expect that, that all flat uh, directions would be lifted, maybe lead to some runaway, and there is no real stabilized for the n equals one solution. Um, however, as I said, Kumrun found one for all 84. Um, it seems in general uh, possible to, to solve these equations. Um, and to my understanding, at least, it, it seemed co consistent with this, this paper by, by Aaron and, and Kumrun and Timo where they say essentially, usually you would expect corrections to n equals one uh, Minkowski vacuum because the super potential is not protected from such corrections. But in these kind of models that are essentially morally obifors or antifors of just simple tori, um, it seems the underlying higher SUSI might, might protect us essentially. And one might get away with, with the SUSI n equals one Minkowski vacuum and for the n equals one. Um, so I don't know whether Thomas van Reed is here, but he was also always saying, and I also thought they might not exist at all. Um, so uh, yeah, Frederick Vincent and Thomas van Reed, they, they had a paper here. Um, they, they essentially said they wouldn't expect such solutions to be there because maybe if one wiggles, one can go to the sitter and there shouldn't be the sitter. Um, it is not clear here that you can perturb this Minkowski vacuum in any small way to get to the sitter. 
they are also not connected to any of the ADS solutions. So there are infinite families of ADS solutions I wanted to talk about next. They, they are not connected to this Minkowski vacuum. So they do not emerge in a limit um, of our Minkowski vacuum. Um, I'm sorry, Timmy, you agreed? Did we not agree that these are not Minkowski vacuum? Or? I don't know. So, I mean, I agree that in our case, one would have to check, I guess, what you are saying, the, the twisted sector, because we set it to zero. And but you said that the Waffe et al, I mean, they, they looked at this problem and they found a Minkowski vacuum, but it, it was not a large complex structure. So would they not have found one at large complex structure if they looked at this question, if they existed? Or? Sorry. They didn't look at large complex structure in my paper. I don't know if the follow up paper they did. No, I think sorry, they, sorry. I reason. didn't understand that. My understanding was, I think they might not exist or they do not exist at large complex structure. I did not think they have to. As you said, one has to solve more complicated equations for the periods, but it's not clear that they are not solved, right? I even thought that the original paper might have might have solved the, the correct equations or no for the periods. Yeah, but this is the problem is that once you yeah, I don't know. Once you solve, when you look at the enhanced symmetry points for the periods, yeah, yes. you, usually you have to turn off certain fluxes because yeah. they are associated to an R symmetry enhancement. And when you turn off those fluxes, you usually get new flat directions. So, as far as I can tell, you show that there's no flat directions in large complex structure, but that's not where the, the exact Minkowski vacuum probably lie. I mean, at least that's not what, what was found in the Becker, Becker paper. Uh, so one would have to show that in the landau Ginsburg point where they are, they are exactly Minkowski, there's no flat directions. Is that is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I thought I thought the original Kumrun paper sets all 84 moduli to whatever square root three or one over square root three, and then they found fluxes that gives them a Minkowski vacuum. I'm not. 100% sure that they calculated the masses, but I thought so. I have to double check that. If they calculated the masses and found they are non-zero, then I think this vacuum would be there. And according to our argument, even the corrections wouldn't change that. Maybe they did not. The follow-up papers, I think all worked at the at this subset where you essentially set the um, blow-up modes to zero and only work with the bulk moduli. And then I agree one would have to check the bulk moduli at this enhanced symmetry point to see whether they are flat directions or not. Because as you increase the, the H flux in your family of vacua, you are going away from the large complex structure limit or towards the large oh, complex In our case, limit. actually, it was independent. So it didn't mm -hmm. enter here at all. It was just fixed, yeah. Because the, the, the reason I'm suspect is because this problem is just exactly the same problem as saying, just take type to b forget about the Kähler sector, right. and try to find w0 equals 0 vacua. Yes. w0 equals 0 exactly vacua. And this problem was studied by Katra et al. and many people in 2004 and 2005, and uh, Dine as well afterwards. Then you, you have to find certain fixed points of the periods where there's an enhanced R symmetry. And in the cases that they studied, they found there's always unfixed complex structure moduli at those points. So if you restrict to that point, because you have to turn off some fluxes. If you take generic fluxes, you don't have the enhanced R symmetry and then you don't have a thing. So you have to fix your moduli at that point, then choose the fluxes such that they respect the discrete R symmetry. When you do that, that you have to turn off all the fluxes that don't respect that symmetry. And that usually leads to new flat directions. So the, um, th this is in the Katra et al paper when they looked for W0 equals zero. So that, that is a problem that's been studied a lot. And I think it's the same problem that you're looking at. So. Yes, it sounds very much the same. And I thought these were solutions to it. I mean, we of course just saw it for two. Yeah, and they I are solutions, but that doesn't mean there's no flat directions. I mean, you can yes, choose. Yes, yeah. no, but I, I, I thought, I mean, in Kumrun's paper, they have multiple solutions to multiple model where they keep all moduli in the game. I, I think ours that, was always frozen at the origin where we have these R symmetries, if I remember correctly. My memory right, not be, right. my data I don't know what then the mass matrix is, whether you calculated that in that setting. Don't, don't uh, ask me. I have to look at the paper. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I mean, I looked at it, but I don't remember exactly um, 
whether it was calculated there worst case we can also try to calculate like, it i mean you can think of it in terms of the symmetry just if there are any moduli which are uncharged under this discrete r symmetry then they are unfixed by the fluxes so the, the ones that are charged under the discrete r symmetry they are fixed because if you if you give them a value you break right. the yeah. so, so these are so, so these are all these are all the moduli will have some r charge because the moduli corresponds to x i x j x k in the lambda Ginsburg potential and the third root of unity multiplication, or phi i, phi j, phi k. And the third root of unities are these R symmetries. So all of them would break some R symmetry. Yes, yeah, so if they are all charged, then it could also be fixed. Yeah, that could be true. Yeah, yeah. That's what happened for us, I think. Yeah, okay. I think so too. Um, so I, I, I will double check it, but I thought they are all stabilized. Um, I mean, the masses receive corrections because there are string group corrections, but I thought at least at the original minimum, they were all fixed. Yeah. I, I would double check. It's a very good point. Yeah, important point. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the the Minkowski vacuum, at least to me, seem not to obviously violate any swamp land conjectures. Maybe a little bit of an counterintuition, but I mean we had strong coupling, and maybe things there are also slightly different. Hopefully. Um. So the next thing were. Um, ADS vacuum, and here I might go a little bit faster. Let me just recall from, from Dita, Aaron, and Kumrun, uh, the ADS distance conjecture that essentially there is a tower of states becoming light with some power alpha, alpha is positive, alpha is one half in the strong version or, or, or larger than one half. Um, yeah, also holds in Dissiter space is not overly relevant for us, although I might also briefly comment on Dissiter space. Um, Okay, so the very first family, which naturally had to be there and is kind of a trivial check, which we found is essentially the DJKT dual. The DJKT dual, um, so this might also give a different po point of view on, on this whole DJKT setup. Um, one can obtain by turning off three of the H fluxes, then we are left with a single H flux that get dualized to the single H flux in DJKT. And that is constrained by the tadpole. However, whatever gets dualized into the F4 flux in DJKT is unconstrained. So in these simple models, one could cook up ADS families that um, are at parametrically weak coupling if we make F sub one large, and if we make in U uh, the complex structure uh, large here, then um, we should have control over all corrections, string loop and, and, and any kind of uh, other corrections in the large complex structure limit are essentially suppressed. And this outcome is essentially the same as uh, what one finds in DJKT. The, the ADS scales like one over F1 to the nine halves. And if one plugs that into the tower equation, which one can get from, from mirror symmetry, one finds that the tower goes like F1 to the seven half and that- uh, right. When you say that you get to a mirror symmetry, what do you mean? You, how do you trust these and that's limit of large F? That, that's not obvious to me. How do I trust Even if what? you take this, how do you find the tower of massive states in this? You have to know something about the geometry which is not under your control. Yeah, so I essentially use, so in, in, in the type 2A, is the KK tower becoming light? So what we did here, we just used G-duality sure. and changed the complex, the, the volume for the complex I, I would say, I would say, I would say it in a simple example. So if you take sphere and overfold it, you can make the volume as small as you want, but it doesn't make the mass smaller or larger. Right. So I think here the MU is essentially the complex structure. So I would interpret this as some winding modes normally, which become no, I mean, like- In other words, what I'm trying to say is that without knowing with that, just by scaling arguments, you might be misled to think you know the mass tower scale. You will be talking about some tower, but not the lightest tower. Oh yeah, so I, 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 I'm nowhere claiming, nor do I know whether this is fully settled in DJKT. I'm nowhere claiming that this is the lightest tower. Okay, Sorry. good, because yeah. to check the conjectures that we had with, right. uh, with Iran and, and right. Dieter, we have to actually know that's the lightest tower. Right, so I, I, I I, I, I hope I didn't say that. I think I didn't say it. There is a tower becoming light. This tower should be morally the, the winding string modes uh, kind of dual to, to the KK tower under mirror symmetry. And that scales like seven halves compared to uh, ADS nine halves. 
that gives the usual DJKT 718s. That is uh, smaller than one half. However, that is still consistent with the refined um, refined ADC conjecture from uh, Angel Uranga and company, where they argue that in the presence of um, 4D discrete ZK three form symmetry, the tower goes like whatever the the K is in the ZK symmetry times ADS. So in our case, just based on mirror symmetry and the, the relation to DJKT, we expect the discrete ZF1 symmetry, and then the tower goes like this F1 times three ADS. So but, in that but, sense, but do, you, but do you agree that the undefined one could still be correct because you do not know the full tower? I don't know all the towers. I know this tower is there. I don't know whether there are other towers in yeah. the unrefined version. Well, could be what correct. I'm trying to say is that it's not that it's not that uh, this satisfies the defined one, but you do not know if the undefined one is correct or not. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Because I don't know which one is the lightest tower. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes, absolutely. That That is correct. Um, yes. So this is kind of a check and this is all nice. Um, I wanted to mention here, since I worked on that, Miguel worked on this a little bit. There is one of the puzzling features of this solution is that the mass is squared uh, in the DJKT solution. Uh, sorry, in the... Yeah, in the solution that is dual to DJKT. So we find this solution. We have two complex moduli for real masses. And if you express them in radius of the ADS, you find 10, 18, 70, and 88. So these are integers, which should be very puzzling. They are not flux dependent. Everything cancels. You just get an integer on the nose. All fluxes, all free parameters disappear or are kind of hidden in here. Um, and what is even more weird, which was discovered by Joe Conlon at company recently, is that if you calculate the dual scaling dimension for these operators dual to, to these scalars, you find uh, 5, 6, 10, and 11. So they are, again, integers on the nose. So it's not only that these are integers, but you add 9 plus 4 times this integer, take a square root, add 3, divide by 2, and you're again get an integer. So this is again, very puzzling, very confusing. We find the same feature and it was studied by, by many people here, Fien, uh, Thomas van Reed, Miguel, uh, and many other people uh, in, in a variety of contexts. And it still kind of awaits an explanation. Why does this happen in these particular models? Um, okay, so now let me, <clears throat> let me mention this is something completely different. This is not DJKP dual. It's just a different infinite family of ADS vacua, not dual to DJKT. And we find the tower alpha equals one half. So we find the unrefined conjecture is correct in this case. This is just a different infinite family. It's given in our papers. I don't present it here. Um, I just wanted to say we find infinite families that satisfy the unrefined conjecture uh, as expected. Um, and I also wanted to mention this family surprisingly has, or well, by surprisingly, definitely has non-integer masses. So even the masses depend on the fluxes, they become complicated uh, and only in the infinite flux limit do they take on this complicated non-rational form. So in these families, the integers don't appear and the refined or strong version of the ADC conjecture is correct. Um, so Tim, one question, what is yeah. the flux that you tune here to become large in this new family? I'm not 100% sure I didn't write it down. I would assume it could still be the F4 flux, but now we turn on kind of the equivalent of geometric and non-geometric fluxes on the type 2A side. Mm -hmm. But I'm... Um, and you remember how the vacuum energy scales is like in DGKT or it's very different? I don't know, Muto, do you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's different. And I think the flux that we send to infinity is F1 again. And the way it's the it scales flux. is quite different. Yeah, it's the same flux, but the way it scales, I think, is different from the way the potential scales for the DZKT dual. Okay. So it's a smaller power, you know? Um, or bigger? Well, I kind of check it out. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean, it's all given in our paper. It's a smaller power. Sorry, it's a smaller power. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, Mutu did a lot of this, or all the, this numeric analysis and remembers all the numbers. Um, 
but yeah, I had it on the slide. So this is just to mention it's here. Now the next kind of interesting thing or last interesting thing maybe is there are infinite families with alpha equals one half. So they satisfy the strong version of the ADC conjecture and they have the number of these three brains going to infinity. So here one can set four fluxes to zero and the tadpole, we have two terms and the fluxes don't have to be ISD. This is one of these kind of features that comes out of in these models. The ISD condition does not arise um, in this case where we have kind of the volume frozen. So that allows us to send the fluxes to minus infinity and then the D brains to plus infinity with a difference of 12 essentially. So we can satisfy the tadpole while making the number of D brains arbitrarily large. These solutions arise at parametrically controlled. Uh, so we send F1 to infinity, sorry. We send F1 to infinity, which makes N flux negative. We just keep this fixed. Um, F1 to infinity makes the string coupling parametrically weak, as weak as we want. H0, we kind of keep fixed, but we can make it large. So we can make it 10 million or 100 million or whatever you like. So we can also be at really, really large complex structure. So these solutions seem to be under control because we have a very large complex structure and very weak string coupling. And uh, the ADS scales like this, which is again alpha equals one half, which is not exciting, but for me it was at least exciting to get ND3 going to infinity. You get an infinite number of these three brains. So that um, normally is something where one would expect there's an infinite number, or I still expect an infinite number of, of light or the uh, de degrees of freedom associated to the open strings. And if you place them on top of each other, we would get some SU ND3 gauge group. So the, the number of degrees of freedom should grow like N squared over D3. And that should essentially bring down the, um, the species scale also because the number of degrees of freedom goes to infinity. These are space-time filling brains. So we have an arbitrarily large rank However, it is in ADS. So um, in Minkowski, one would highly worry, maybe in ADS, one can say it is okay um, to get these large ranks. In Minkowski, we always have this problem uh, that, yeah, string universality, and we start kind of with a rank of 32 or something in Tendi. Um, that, sorry, 16, I guess, yeah, sorry. Um, then we, we reduce, Further and but there's kind of a bound in all dimensions that that seems to be not too large. But in ADS, we can definitely, or it seems we can go to kind of infinity in this case by just sending these fluxes to infinity and increasing the number of these three brains. And something similar was already argued for by Aaron and um, Dita and, and Kumrun. They, they reviewed when they discussed the original ADC conjecture, they discussed an example of ADS seven times S4 mod CK. And there one also gets an SUK times SUK gauge group, uh, which can have arbitrarily large rank. There it's kind of argued that essentially the way to understand it, one should think of these brains as defects. So they are kind of point-like in S4 um, and they are space-time filling or the gauge groups in, in ADS seven. In this dual picture, it's maybe not as easy to picture them as defects since there's not real, strictly speaking, a geometry. Uh, there's no geometric space per se, but there's also no scale separation. So morally, it's maybe the same, but um, it is not exactly the same. Also, in this example, one can, I think, send k to infinity, making the gauge group arbitrarily large, but the space stays ADS7. So ADS7 doesn't decompactify. For us, when you send the gauge group to infinity, ADS becomes Minkowski. So the ADS moves to Minkowski if you increase the rank of the gauge group. Um, so in that sense, our, our um, solution here is slightly different from this example. Um, but it, it is equally interesting that, that you don't really have this bound. And the species scale, if you place them all on top of each other, would, would make come down even faster than the tower of light states here for alpha equals one half. Okay, so this- Tim, just, just yeah. so you know, it's already five minutes. Yeah, five yeah, minutes yeah, yeah. So five. this brings me to the end pretty much. Okay. Um, so there is a non-SUSI DJKT dual solution and 
there is a Sitta vacuum. We also found that the Sitta vacuum has the problem that is that strong coupling. And the Sitta non susi solutions, they are um, not protected. Um, so since you can't have that at weak coupling nor at large complex structure, here we expect there are a lot of corrections. However, we, we just search for those because other people search for them and they didn't find it. We found these solutions, but the only solution we found would actually require also these three brains. So there would be extra light degrees of freedom that are not stabilized. And there are lots of string loop corrections. Uh, so these are not necessarily in a, uh, not in a regime where one could trust them. So they didn't really contrast them with, with all these Desider Schwamblend conjectures. But these are stable, at least, um, but at strong coupling. OK, so that brings me then to, to the end. And let me conclude. So we studied or reviewed this, this type to be flux compactification on landau ginsberg oriented folds, and they are dual to rigid Calabiao manifolds. Um, yeah, we found infinite families of fully stabilized 40N equals vacuum uh, to be studied further, I guess, based on the discussion with Aaron. Um, but we also didn't see, well, at least with, uh, didn't see an immediate uh, inconsistency with, with, um, with this one black conjectures, but I guess a number of, of solutions would be problematic. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would um, go against finiteness at the last point. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Um, and then we found that, oops, sorry, what happened? Now? Sorry, sorry, I apologize. I touched my mouse wheel. Um, yeah, we found new infinite families of ADS vacua that are not dual. And whenever they are not dual to DJKT, then um, there's a tower of state with alpha equals one half. In one case, the tower was three halves. So we can get alpha equal or larger than one half in all of these cases that are not dual to GJKT. We also found non susi ADS vacua, um, but they are essentially dual to DJKT. So they are, have masses above the BF bound and presumably they should be um, unstable and decay somehow, but we haven't studied decay channels for those. And yeah, the last thing what I mentioned, which is maybe the most exciting one is that uh, one can get arbitrarily large gauge groups in ADS4 space-time filling by just including an arbitrarily large number of these three brains. And these solutions are at recoupling and they are at large complex structures. So they should be trustworthy. Um, and yeah, I mean, to me it's puzzling because the D brains kind of generate a tadpole, but the flexes are actually able to kind of soak up to the D3 brain charge. You don't need O planes for that. And we find agreement with the ADS distance conjecture, um, but the large rank for the gauge group is, is for me at least interesting. And it always leads to a decompactification limit, which is slightly different from the, from the ADS seven example discussed by Dita Aaron and, and Kumrun in their paper. So I think for me, it's very exciting to study this strongly coupled region because normally we don't really have access to it. We always are recoupling and it's very interesting maybe to get into a new regime and study there the, the swamp lane conjectures and see whether they still hold or they, they need to be refined. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for it.